Hi, this is Julia Whittup with Shamanic Arts Studio, and we have with us today Melvin Marsh, who is going to be talking about stress and hypnotherapy, and he's an expert in that, and tell us more about how you got to be an expert in stress. Well... One of the first things that I did is when I went to undergraduate, I uh, have a degree in anthropology and human biology. Most of the research I performed was through for people who were actually working directly on stress as a research area. Mostly the biocultural you know, responses to stress. And you know, from, so from there, I already started getting a very good understanding of what stress can actually cause as far as danger. Then I went off to graduate school. My master's degree was in so something slightly unusual. It was under in space studies, which is like astronomy, but without the math. And when I was working on my thesis, my thesis was actually on the identification of psychological stressors in astronauts and cosmonauts. Some of the mathematical formulas and models that my advisor and I created based on our research are being used and studied by the Russian Space Agency and NASA. Wow. So um, from there, I did, of course, a lot of other research. I eventually uh, went to medical school, found out that as much stressful as stressful as that is, they really don't like transgender people or people that are different and uh, ended up, I ended up leaving that and became a certified hypnotherapist. I attended Hypnosis Motivation Institute, which is, you know, you get 300 practice hour or clock hours before you even graduate, which is more, much more than just a short class, you know, weekend class like many other hypnotists. I then performed a 200 hour internship before I earned my certification. So I'm one of the uh, probably most educated uh, hypnotherapists that are currently working, you know, in the United States today. So this is one of, so stress of course is a huge, um, you know, interest of mine, having been an interest of mine academically since 2002 and it is currently 2017. So that is about 15 years of working directly on stress and stress management. So uh, do you have any, any further questions or would you like me to start sharing my screen? Oh, uh, I think you're already sharing your screen. Emma, it, yeah, says, okay. so it, says, uh, it says my desktop sharing is paused. So, oh, okay, yes, go ahead and start that then. Okay, so let's hit resume share. Um, and let's see if it's going to behave itself. Can you see my, my screen? Yes, there we oh, go. Yes. All right. That is awesome. Let's see if I can just move this off to the side. I don't know if it's going to, if that, can I hide that? Let's see if I can hide that. Uh, I guess not. I don't really care. So the title of my talk currently is from stress to success, managing stress through hypnotherapy. As you know, I already mentioned a little bit about myself, and here we have the, the information of how to contact me. You can go to my website, afterhourshypnotherapy.com, at, at any point if you ever need uh, me for anything. You might, my email, afterhourshypnotherapy at gmail.com, or of course, you can just email me through the website. So we already mentioned a little bit about stress. Now, the fact is, is that the vast majority of people are under stress. In 2015, 24% of adults showed signs of quote unquote extreme stress, which was referring to more than one uh, stress related symptom. Uh, surprisingly, this, um, the, the more education that you had, it, it showed that the more likely you were, were to be under stress. And perhaps unsurprisingly, the lower your income, also the majority 
you know, the, the, the more likely you were to be under stress. So I'm suspecting graduate students were probably under extreme amounts of stress, high education, low income, or maybe, acad or maybe academics in general. So certainly that does ex explain a lot as far as what I have seen. Now, if we want to discuss much more recently, much more recent numbers, 2017, when uh, the, our new, our, our latest president became, you know, officially took office, 80% of adults in the United States showed a stress-related symptom, at least one. Stress, of course, we're looking at things like headaches, feeling overwhelmed, which is, of course, a big one, especially in today's society, feeling anxious, of course, or just feeling depressed or sad. Yes, even depression can be a sign of just being under extreme stress. So the question is, is how, many pe how many people do you know that suffer from at least one of these symptoms? A lot. Yeah, I'm, betting, I'm betting almost everybody, at least one. After all, it does say 80%. And that's you know, probably as bad as a good of an example as we could possibly get. I'm sure if more people were interviewed, they they'd actually see that that it's higher. Of course, people of those of a of uh, of minority status will tend to show more stress. This probably should should um, surprise nobody, to be honest with you. You know, this includes you know racial minorities. It includes religious minorities. And of course, the LGBTQ community. Now, this here is a quote from you know the APA's executive director discussing you know how much chronic stress, chronic stress, chronic you know while acute stress, short-term stress can be of course very beneficial. Chronic stress can be a big problem. Acute stress you know, such as maybe going out and doing some exercise, that's usually acute stress, or stress of an upcoming exam can actually pressure you to do a little bit better than, than normal. But long-term chronic stress can mess with your hormones. And as she mentions, it can make existing health problems worse. And it could also even just encourage you to go and find ways to kind of self-medicate. That could mean people are taking up smoking. That could make people are drink, could mean people are drinking. It could mean so many different things. And of course, the bad habits that you take on, such as things like, you know, such as, you know, you know such as, you know, taking on this ability to procrastinate, to avoid this stress, of course, we know that this can affect things like your career. You might miss that deadline that you so needed to do. You might not put the full effort because now you're rushing. This is, not, of course, not a very healthy thing. This can cause even more problems, which, of course, can encourage the stress that you already have, making your problems even worse. The, most, the, the first line of defense is, when it comes down to it, self-care. You know, we, we have, a few, uh, have a few things here that are some of the most common ways to actually help deal with, you know, with self-care, to make things a little easier on you so that you can get, control the stress before the stress controls you. Self-care includes exercising few times a week. You know, some of the recommend recommendations are, you know, two to three times a week, 20, 20 minutes a day of exercise. Could be strength training. Could even go out, be out for a walk. If you go out for a walk and you're in a safe area, this can even, even be even better because now you could be going outside. The increased sunlight has been known to help reduce depression. You could go out for a nice walk in the park. 
and you can take time to appreciate the various things that that are out there in nature of course eating right that that should you know of course be no surprise the more stress you're under the average person is probably going to reach to foods that aren't so healthy for them they're going to rush out to potentially mcdonald's now i don't have anything against mcdonald's but if you're doing that constantly because that's the best you can do because you're so rushed you're probably going to gain a few extra pounds that you might not necessarily want which of course can continue to add stress to your body that of course can alter you know alter other things it can cause you to now you do it too much have a cholesterol problem which of course means you going to the doctors more often spending more money taking more medication a big a, a way to just cut this back as well as giving your body what it needs is simply to eat right that would mean get take some fruits and vegetables which have been shown to help combat stress and you know unless you have a few uh, disorders in which case then maybe you want to weigh off the fruits and vegetables but of course you work with and you can work with your doctor or a nutritionist to find out what is best for you in a way to help reduce your stress level and yet still give you what your body needs of course another common one is sleep you're not going to pull your best work sleeping two to three hours a night. You, you are unfortunately just not going to do that. A, a lot of people would like to, and surely almost everybody in the United States does seem to have an issue with sleep deprivation. Now, I'm not saying you have to sleep eight hours a night because even that's not right for some people. Some people work really good doing a bifastic sleep cycle or polyphastic sleep cycle sleeping if you know in shifts you know sleeping four hours each time sleeping five hours each time some people require more than your standard eight hours of sleep this is of course something that you need to work out with yourself and learn more about what you need in order to make sure that you live a healthy life Another thing that people have been suggesting lately has been forms of mindfulness, meditation, or even hypnosis. These are great ways to learn how to calm down your mind and take a, take a breather. Don't experience all of the stress of the day right now when you're, when you're doing something like this. You can just take the time to enjoy yourself, to be present in the moment, to not really worry about what happened in the past or what's likely to happen in the future. And these are some great ways to just enjoy yourself. Now, a lot of people are really not sure about what hypnosis is. Now, I know some people that certainly are, certainly anybody who comes to me, I make sure that I teach them what it is before I ever encourage them to learn how to do this themselves. Hypnosis is a perfectly natural state <clears throat> of restful relaxation. If you've ever gone and you know, got lost in a good book, you were in a state of trance. If you've ever gotten lost in a movie so much that you didn't hear your your mother or your spouse calling for you you were in a state of trance even highway hypnosis is called that for a reason although it's suggested that you do not go into trance when driving a, a vehicle in fact I don't even suggest you listening to this po this, this podcast while you're driving now, during hypnosis, there are some really fun physiological statements or th things that occur. The most obvious one is if you were hooked up to an EEG, 
which measures brain waves, you would notice that your brain waves start to slow. The average person in a state of alertness is in beta. It's in beta. That means that you're alert, you're aware, you're doing very nice. Uh, as you start to relax, they will start to drop into alpha and then into theta. Now, while you're still mostly conscious and still can generally hear what all is going on around you, you're just very relaxed. During this time, and if you ever um, do go into trance, you can actually put one of the a, a pulse rate monitor on on yourself, and you can actually watch your pulse drop after the induction. I take I frequently wear a Fitbit, and actually watched my pulse drop about. 25 beats a minute um, when, uh, after I was, when I was seeing my own hypnotherapist. I was in the 80s when I, when I walked into his office based on the recording, and it dropped down to in the 50s. So that is another fun little <clears throat> find there. Mel? Yes? What was in the 80s? Your, my pulse. That oh, was an example. Oh, okay. Uh, it can lo lower your pulse. Your, your, your pulse. Um, I use a Fitbit, which before I started sharing my screen, you might have noticed or not noticed that I had a purple thing on my wrist. That's actually my Fitbit. And I was actually curious about you know, exactly how much you really drop. And mm -hmm. I wore my Fitbit and I um, had a session with my hypnotherapist. So it does take my pulse. And I eventually pulled it up on my screen at the end of a little bit after the session and actually watched my pulse drop because it was being recorded. Wow. So it dropped from being in the 80s to being about 58. Okay. And this has been very consistent. Um, so with, with many, uh, with of course, many uh, hypnotic subjects or clients. I've never actually ch checked my blood pressure, but I can assume that that has probably decreased as well. Now, in hypnosis, you know, what we're doing in hypnosis is we're taking your mind. Your mind is consisted, you know, consists of a few different parts. Your conscious mind and your subconscious mind. Some people want to call it the unconscious mind. I don't think your mind really matters what it's being called. But if we take your conscious mind, we're encouraging it to go out on a coffee break. That's all we're doing. When it's distracted, and it could be distracted by anything that we're doing, that's allowing us to have access to directly to the subconscious, just bypasses that, that critical filter, which allows us to give more direct suggestions and hopefully provide cha uh, change to the client. A lot of people do worry about hypnosis, about whether or not you can, you know, cause somebody to do something against their will. Because you're sitting, you know, people are sitting there watching the various um, movies. You know, they're watching The Jungle Book, we're watching Ka almost eating, e eating Mowgli, or they're watching Get Out, which I've not seen, but I've heard enough about it. You know, they're, they're expecting stuff like that. They're expecting that I'm going to take control of them. I cannot control you if I'm putting you in, into hypnosis. You're not going to go against your value system. I'm, you know, if, if I could get you to go against your value system and make you do something that you didn't want, I would not be a hypnotherapist. I would have collected enough credit card numbers that I would be off uh, on a little island somewhere. And the only thing I would be doing is, is dancing around with my rattle and drums and having some, some fun. I'd probably also be hitting up a lot more uh, intensives than I would be, uh, than, than I currently am doing because I'd have the money to do so. I'm not going, I can't make you go and rob a bank. 
uh, if you do choose to go off and rob a bank, you do not know me. I have nothing to do with you robbing a bank. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of that background in hypnosis. Uh, Julia, you, I know you've been trained in, uh, in hypnosis. Mm -hmm. Are there any specific things that you think that, uh, since I don't see anybody else asking questions, that I might have missed that you might want me to discuss before I, give, I do the activity? Um, I can't think of any. I think the experiencing the activity might be the best way to, uh, to understand what it is and how it works. Well, uh, I, I totally agree. I just like giving an abbreviated version of my pre-talk before I even do my, my progressive. Uh huh. And I just wanted to make sure I got most of it. I, it's so weird doing it to basically, uh, with uh, basically another trained hypnotist there. So I want to actually, you know, allow everybody to experience just a brief uh, hypnotic induction. This uh, is one of the most common inductions used for, for hypnotherapy. It's also a really good way, if you do this enough times, to help reduce your insomnia, if you assuming that's a problem. When I first um, was introduced to this exercise, I was in middle school and had really, really bad insomnia. I read it in a book. I didn't know for, for many years later that this actually was a hypnotic induction. So what I'm gonna be doing is this is called a progressive relaxation. It is a really good thing um, to do and to practice in the event that you start getting stressed out if you do this enough times, your body will automatically start doing the exercise, which means you're going to have reduced anxiety in the future and reduced stress in the future. So if there are no further questions, I would recommend everybody trying to get comfortable. You can do this, of course, in a chair. Uh, I would recommend if you are doing it in a chair to have a chair that has some nice uh, arms and this end very stable just so you don't fall out normally I don't do this exercise unless I can see the people because there are these people called floppers who go so deep into trance they fall out of the chair and uh, I really want to make sure that not too many people you know flop out of their chairs with me not being able to see you so I take I take no responsibility if you fall out if you can do this on a bed or a couch, that is the ideal situation. So I'm just going to give you guys a few minutes to, a few seconds really, to get ready, because hopefully you would already be getting ready. And then we can start. So, I'll make sure that my dogs are quiet. Thank you, Corky. So, I want you to sit back and relax. And for those who are already trained and conditioned to do for hypnosis, you of course know what's coming. For those who are not experienced in hypnosis, I have a real treat for you. So I want you to sit back and relax. And I want you to just take a point on the wall and just watch that. And when your eyes feel so heavy that they might want to close, you can just let them close. And 
and you can allow yourself to start to visualize a big ball of light. This ball can, of course, be whatever color you want it to be. It can, of course, be white, which is a traditional color. Or it can be blue, or it can be pink. And it can really be whatever you want it to be. As you visualize this light, you might notice or not then it gives off a feeling of relaxation and health and healing. You can, of course, I, of course, sit and feel a humming or pulsing or something completely different. All of those are completely valid experiences. And I want you to just focus on that ball, as well as focusing on your breathing. I want you to take a nice deep inhale and enjoy that relaxation and then exhale all the stress of your day and you can continue again to inhale the relaxation. And exhale any stress. And that's okay. I want you to allow that ball of light that you've been visualizing to start to go down into your toes and you can allow yourself to go and enjoy enjoy as that relaxation and that ball starts to touch it starts to touch your, your toes, and you can just let any tension that's in your toes to continue to go far, far away. You can allow yourself to enjoy that feeling of relaxation. To just continue.
and you can allow that relaxation to come up and go into the arch of your feet. You can continue to allow Allow yourself to perhaps feel, to allow, allow yourself to feel perhaps somebody giving you a massage. It feels so good when somebody is giving you that, that massage in your feet. Remove all the tension and just enjoy the sensation. Enjoy the sensation that you are experiencing. And you can allow that ball of energy to come up. And you can feel it start to touch your ankles. If you like, you can, of course, roll your ankles some, somewhat and get any tension that you might have. And get that simply removed. You can allow that relaxation to continue up. Up. Through through those ankles. And you can let the feeling go up and relax. Relax your, your calves and just let it go bit by bit, allowing, allowing yourself to focus on the relaxation. And allow yourself to visualize and imagine what it's like. What it would be like if every muscle and fiber just chose to release its tension. What would it like if you saw that ball of light go down layer by layer And go through every layer of muscle, allowing it to remove as much or as little of the stress as it wishes. Perhaps it will, it will 
completely go relax. Or perhaps it will just partially relax. Either way, doesn't it feel nice? And just let it go calmly and completely right down through every muscle and down to the bone. You can also allow yourself when you're ready and only when you're ready to move up to your knees. You can, of course, choose to let that go. Or you can allow yourself to not go at all. And perhaps you're choosing to skip the knees and to go straight for your upper legs. So many people hold so much stress in their upper legs and thighs. I don't know how much or how little you want to remove that stress. Perhaps a little or perhaps it can completely go. What would it look like if you completely allowed yourself to relax? How much better would you feel? Would you help? How good? What would it also be like if you targeted another very common place of stress? Your lower back. Your lower back can, of course, reduce and relax itself as much as any other part of you. However, so many people don't think about it. But you can take that feeling of relaxation and just allow yourself to have more and more comfort in your day. What would it like be like for you to have your lower back be full of comfort and relaxation. What would that look like? What would that feel like? Would you be able to, in the future, walk a little bit better? Would you be calmer? Would you be less quick to anger? What would it be like? You 
you could even allow yourself to just just let all of those muscles continue to go down down and down You can continue to allow that relaxation to move up to your stomach and to, and to your middle part of your back. And just let all that tension go. Now. And you can choose to just relax more and more and go into that state of deep relaxation. And you can, of course, allow that to go up into your upper back. And you might even notice when that ball of relaxation comes up, you might even notice that with every breath you take, your body becomes more and more relaxed. And that with every pulse, every heartbeat, your heart just sends out more and more. more and more relaxation. Calmer and calmer. And more and more relaxed. And you can go back And just start to notice that any tension in your shoulders is quickly and easily going away. Now. You can imagine, if you like, somebody that's rubbing your shoulders, if that helps. Or perhaps you can just visualize a wave of calmness and relaxation coming over you. I wonder in which way you will let the relaxation help you. What would that be like? I also start to want that relaxation going through your upper arms and letting any tension that you had just start to disappear.
you may notice that your forearms may have already started to relax. That's good. That's right. And can just allow you Just start to relax. And maybe you can start to visualize all that remaining tension that you shoot out through your fingers, like Spider Man, perhaps. Casting out that web of tension, just allowing it to be filled with pure and complete relaxation. You may want to start to move back up, back through your arms and back up into your into your neck perhaps you will let your tension just drift off nobody knows exactly how deep each person will individually go. But you can choose to let so much of that tension just vanish. And you can let that relaxation go up, up into, into your jaw, where you can, of course, just let that go. Release any tension that you might have. And you can allow that relaxation to go up through your ears and through your nose. Let's, let's not forget the small muscles surrounding your eyes. And you can, of course, just let that relaxation go up, just overflow. And overflow so much. And you can allow yourself to enjoy this relaxation. And I want you to remember that you can pull back this feeling at any time by allowing yourself to visualize 
that ball of light. And choosing to let it go up and down your body. And every time that you do this exercise, you will remain calmer and more relaxed. And now, while still being relaxed, I do want you to start to come back to full alertness so that you can ask any questions that you might have about this experience. Again, knowing that you can come back at any time. If you have any questions, make sure that you take yourself off mute. So then I can answer anything that one might have. You can come back into the room at any time, Julia. One of the great problems with the progressive relaxation is that frequently people will fall asleep. Julia. I think I, I, <laughs> I'm here. Just checking. Yeah, I think I might have dozed off a little bit there. I get, I have that response. Uh, people get that response to me. <laughs> I'm that very good nice. at what I do. That was very nice. Thank you. I do feel really relaxed. I bet if I had a Fitbit on, it would show. Yep, I'm gonna see. Let's see here. Right now, my my uh, pulse is at uh, is in the 70s. But then again, I didn't get to fully experience the situation. Right, because you were doing the guiding. Yeah, I mean, it's possible I had m more, but you know, I do go into trance with my clients frequently. But I was keeping an eye on the clock. <laughs> Okay. Also, the transcended a few minutes ago. Thank you very much. You're welcome. For doing this, and um, people can contact you on our website too, Shamanic Arts. You're a member, right? Yeah, you're. Well, I've got a. I mean, I have, I get the email. I don't know if I'm in anything else. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I would um, encourage you to join. It's a free membership, and then you'll be listed in the directory if people want to get a hold of you. And if you and if you ever want me to come out to do the group sessions or whatnot, you know where to find me too. Oh, I would love that. Yes. Right now, I can't fully afford myself travel traveling out, 
Um, but that's something to c potentially consider in the future. I don't mind doing it. I like traveling. Provided somebody can watch my dogs, I don't care. All right. So uh, keep me in mind. I will. I think that'd be great. Because I also do past life regression, of course. Um, I'm, if, if you go to my website, you can actually see all the different things I'm, I'm certified in. And your website is After Hours Hypnotherapy. AfterHoursHypnotherapy.com. If you do a search for my name, the program, it comes right up. Do a search for the practice, it comes right up. I am so easy to find. It's not even funny. Okay. Cool. And I also do virtual sessions um, through Skype or Zoom, if anybody would like to get a hold of me that way. I also provide mentoring services. I do, I'm a public speaker, etc. So you name it, I probably have done it or I'm doing it. I also do handwriting analysis because why not? <laughs> okay thank you so much for being with us today i'm glad that you had me i'm glad that we could finally make this happen